My name is Austin Gregg. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, licensed chemical dependency counselor, and I'm the CEO of Connections Wellness Group. In this week's mental health moment, I wanna talk about something that we all try to avoid, and it's fear. And the way I wanna introduce it is something that sounds creative, but when we really think about it, is actually quite common. And it's this idea of paradox of intention. And this is a tenet of a theory that describes fear, and it says that the way we act ensures that the very thing we try to avoid actually happens. And so by our own actions, we are manifesting the very thing we avoid. And that sounds a little paradoxical, which I guess it has a great name, but I wanna share with you some examples of what fear does when it allows itself to cloud our judgment. So let's think about people who might experience panic attacks and they have anxiety. You know, chances are we're going to do everything in our day to avoid having the discomfort of panic attacks. But actually it's our constant focus on avoiding something that actually creates the panic attack itself. Here's another example. Maybe individuals who can't go to sleep at night, um, who have insomnia, try to think about going to sleep. They put a lot of energy in it, a lot of effort, and it's actually that energy and effort that keeps people from sleeping. And so the paradox of intention pairs itself well to fear in that in our avoidance of the one thing, we actually create it ourselves. And so fear is this tricky little thing, and it tells us that discomfort is something that we should always avoid. And it is our avoidance that causes us to run from fear. And we only run from things that we're scared of, and the act of running away scared creates something a little bit more severe than it actually is. Let me tell you guys a story. It was a research study done in the middle of a mall, and it was elaborate. It had all of these actors in white coats surrounding this glass jar and they're advertising that if you have a fear if you have a phobia we can cure it immediately through this one public experiment and so we know this sounds far-fetched but all of the individuals in white coats were yep i'm a doctor this is real this is going to happen and because of that influence in the overall community they ended up doing it so what was the experiment well, it had them list what are our phobias? What are the things that we fear? And so people would say things like snakes or bees, ants, spiders, you fill in the blank. And the idea was, hey, in this public setting with the professionals around you, all you have to do is put this blindfold on, stick your hand in this paper bag inside this glass container, and as soon as you do it, your fear and phobia, they're gone. And so what ended up happening is certainly they weren't putting these things in bags for people to touch, but rather it was just a teddy bear. And what they showed is these people overthinking their fear and they had shaky hands, the shaky voices. And as they reached into the bag, their anxiety heightened, their fear heightened until they figured out it was just a teddy bear. And sometimes when we have fear, that's exactly what we do. We overthink it to the point and we convince ourselves that it is not okay to be uncomfortable, but in fact, we know that leaning into our uncomfort zone is where our growing, it's where our healing actually takes place. So this mental health moment of this week is encouragement to lean into what makes us uncomfortable, to call out our fear, because sometimes the very thing that we've been running from is nothing more than a teddy bear inside of a glass box in the middle of a mall. So a cheers to everyone who sits with others during their uncomfortable moments, that does it themselves, and is not afraid to call out fear and does not simply pursue a life of comfort and allow each other to grow within it. This Mental Health Moment is brought to you by Austin Gregg, Connections Wellness Group. We hope you have a wonderful week.